Hey everybody, welcome to the Vinyl Channel. I'm the Vinyl Guy Boz. This is going to be another entry into my series of Seal Classic albums. I like to buy Seal Classic albums. Uh, generally, these are albums that are at least 25 years old or older. Uh, I like to buy them because they're, they're, of course, still sealed and nobody else has played them, which means I have a great chance of them sounding excellent. I do, I do have um, eight other uh, videos where I'm showcasing uh, other Seal Classic albums. If you want to go ahead and check out the very first uh, um, one, of, you know, the very first one, I'll put a card up above. But at the end of the video, I'll put a link to the playlist for the other eight. But this again is number nine. I have 11 Seal Classic albums to go ahead and show you today. So let's go ahead and get to it, shall we? So the very first one here is Airplane. Uh, it's a soundtrack to Airplane. Uh, uh, this is from 1980, uh, so uh, uh, this is the original soundtrack, so very cool. It is still sealed. Somebody took off the price tag and tore a little hole in here, but other than that, it is sealed. So, okay, the second one here is going to be Jim Foster and his album Power Lines. Uh, let's see, this is from 1986, and this is a mainstream rock album. A lot of people call this AOR. Uh, but um, very awesome. And the next one is going to be from the band The Firm. Now, uh, this is a short-lived band from the mid-1980s. They only put out two albums. This is their second album from 1986. So awesome. It's also very cool because it has a Camelot sticker right there. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up. But I remember uh, as a teenager, uh, going to Camelot on the weekends and picking up an album or two uh, in the mall. So uh, lots of great memories there, but very awesome. Again, this is The Firm, and this is their um, uh, Mean Business is the name of the album. Okay, the next one here is going to be Walk the West. This is their self-titled album. I do believe this is the only album that this band put out. It's a pop rock band, uh, and this was put out in 1986. All right, so here's a, here's a very cool one that I came across. So this here is the soundtrack to Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, this is the original 1960s movie. A lot of people uh, don't even know that the 1986 movie with uh, uh, Moranis uh, was not the original. Uh, the original movie that came out in 1960, it was black and white. Uh, they shot it in two days with a budget of only $23,000. Uh, so uh, I recently watched that movie. It was actually very good. I enjoyed it uh, enjoyed it a lot. If you're a fan of Little Shop of Horrors, I recommend you go out and check out that original uh, movie. Uh, it follow, it, it's very similar, but it's different in many ways as well. So this here, and it had on the back of this, it has the entire story of, uh, of the movie and how it came to be. And this here is a ninth, uh, is a, a, a reissue. Uh, the soundtrack uh, is from uh, 1984 and was put up by Rhino Records. So very cool and music by Fred Katz. All right, and the next we have here is a glam metal band uh, from 1984. This is Pet Hate and this is Bad Publicity. This is their debut album. This band only put out two albums and uh, they're from England. So very awesome. And again, again, this is their debut album. So there you are. All right, so I'm a big fan of Kate Tull albums. I actually uh, collect Kate Tull. I have a, a pretty good sized collection of them, but there are a lot of Kate Tull albums out there. More than anybody uh, would ever think is available. And every, every once in a while, I come across one that I didn't know about or I don't have. So I found this one. It's still sealed. Awesome. It's from 1980. This has a bunch of uh, top, top 40 songs from uh, 1980 including uh, Blondie, Pat Benatar, Journey, LRB, Jefferson Starship, The Knack, Cool and the Gang, uh, Trotty Daniels, and etc. etc. So it's very awesome. I can't wait to go ahead and get this one on the turntable. Okay, the next one here is from 1983, and this is Big Street with their uh, debut album. And from what, from what, what I saw in Discog, just their only album, it was self-titled. Uh, this is an AOR uh, or a mainstream rock band. So uh, very awesome. I'll show you the back here. But again, this here is Big Street. Okay, so I came across this one and I was very much intrigued because the name of this band 
is Diamond Rio. I'm gonna go ahead and put it close there so you can see it, but this is not the Diamond Rio country band that we all know, uh, I think of, from I think the 1990s, right, is when that band came out. So this here, it actually spelled R-E-O instead of R-I-O like the country band is. So this here is a glam rock band. Uh, they formed in the 1970s. They put out f five or six albums, I believe. Uh, this one here, I believe is their debut album. Uh, I think, yeah, th uh, this is their debut album from 1975. So uh, very awesome. Uh, it was on the Big Tree Records. Uh, there's the logo there. I'll show you the back of this. But um, uh, but yeah, so I was just, I was just very intrigued uh, when I saw this. I think I got this from a record show. But uh, again, it's still sealed, which is awesome. So there you are. That's uh, Diamond Rio. And I think this is a self-titled album. I don't think it's been titled. So uh, it's a self-titled album from 1975. All right, and if you follow my channels for, for any amount of time, you probably already know that I'm big into soundtracks, and more importantly, I am a huge sci-fi nut, Star Trek, Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, uh, you name it, I am there. I really like sci-fi a lot, and I love sci-fi soundtracks. So this here is actually a, uh, a record that was put out uh, by the Now Sound Orchestra. So a lot of uh, uh, companies were cashing in on uh, on the Star Wars theme and Star Trek theme and stuff like that from the mid to early 70s or late 70s. Uh, I think this one came out probably around 79 or 80. I can't find a release date on it and, and it has no date on it. it. Has a barcode on the back, so it must be later than that. It must be uh, the early to mid 80s. I just realized it had a barcode on it and barcodes were not that common. Uh, in the 70s, I think they, they started to win around 81, 82. So, but anyways, uh, this is, uh, on the back it says it's produced by Bugs Bauer. Uh, it has um, the, the Star Trek theme from the motion picture. It has uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, Close Encounters, and stuff like that. So very, very awesome. Okay, last but not least, we have another AOR or mainstream rock band. Uh, this is Johnny and the Distractions. This is put out on the a and label, and it was put out in 1981. Now, this is their second album. Their very first album they put out, uh, by the way, this is called uh, Let It Rock. So the very first album they put out, which I think is a, a year earlier in 1980, they self-produced, and they put it out on their own label. This one, this one was actually put out by a and Records. I do know they have two or three other uh, albums as well, but those were also put out uh, lesser known, maybe self self produced uh, uh, um, labels as well. I'm not sure, but I do know that this is the only one on a national le uh, label, which is A&M. So uh, I'm very looking forward to hearing this. So there you go. Again, this is uh, Johnny and the Distractions. Let it rock. All right, and that's my video for you today. I think I have enough Steel Classic albums for one more video. Make it an even 10. I'll put that out in the, in the next couple weeks, but I do want to thank everybody for watching today. If you're not subscribed to my channel, now's a great time. If you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and put, put it down in the comments. I'll be sure to, to go ahead and respond. But again, I want to thank everybody, and I'll see you all next time.